these lizards are on a completely different level, you guys. This is my girl, Blaze. I'm Skylar of Hail the Scales. Today, I wanted to talk to you about monitor behaviors. I wanted to talk to you about how awesome their brains work. I wanted to so show you just how intelligent they are and how showing her the tongs she can differentiate my face, my fingers, everything that's going on. You can see that tongue working at a million miles a minute right now. They are so tapped into their environment and their surroundings. I'm gonna keep showing her the tongs so she knows, hey, these fingers aren't food. I wanna to talk to you guys about how insane these lizards are and how much we don't understand about how their brains operate and how they pick up everything and anything in their surrounding environments. You guys already know me. This is my girl, Blaze. You've seen her in all kinds of videos. Ow. She's got razor sharp claws, as we all know. As she is a semi-aquatic, semi-arboreal lizard, she is built for swimming, climbing trees, tearing apart giant chunks of prey. This tail right here is not only a giant paddle, but it is a whip. It is an extra appendage for when she needs to hold on to something. As you can see, she wraps it around whatever, my arm, my hand. It's hard for me to put into words, because one, I'm not a great speaker, and two, it is just hard to comprehend what is going on with these lizards until you see it with your own two eyes. I've recently had some friends come over and experience these lizards hands-on, like I've been telling them, and seeing their reactions and seeing them interact with these lizards has really been crazy to see at a second-hand personal view rather than me doing it myself. It really just shows you how smart and how these lizards know me versus another person and the way they act with me versus with another person. There really, is a, there really is a personal bond and a connection between me and each of one of these lizards because anytime someone else enters these rooms, their attitudes change, um, everything about them changes. They become almost hyper aware of their surroundings and on edge because they're just so used to me, a singular person coming in here every day and doing stuff with them that when they see that second body come in here, they instantly kind of get on edge and they want to know what's going on. Who's that other person? But with time and with me explaining to the people, you know, this is what you got to look for. This is what she's doing because she will actually test people to see if they're scared and what they're going to do when she does stuff so she can test your reaction. It is very, it is very hard to explain and to put into words like I was saying, but when you experience this stuff firsthand, it is truly mind blowing. So I just want to try to share as much of this stuff with you guys as possible because these lizards and these reptiles are so much more advanced than we actually give them credit for. So in this video, I want to show you guys some awesome new setups that I got set up and dialed in. You saw a little bit of blaze. I'm going to talk some more about some behaviors, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really want to show some or share some information with you guys. So let's get into this. So you guys, these monitors were set up for Varanus jobiensis, the peach throat monitors, a semi-aquatic, semi-arboreal varanid. These can be used for a wide variety of semi-aquatic to semi-arboreal varanids. In my opinion, don't take my word for it. I am not a scientist. This is all anecdotal experience and talks and experience that I had from other keepers. We've melded our brains together to come with up with ideas. Also, I am not saying that this is their idea. These are all purely my ideas. So if I am wrong and this doesn't work for you, I am sorry. But without further ado, these are a riverside semi-arboreal lizard from the islands of Papua New Guinea and the surrounding islands. Also can be found on the very tip of Australia. Very rare and seldom does that ever happen. Also very hard to access. But with that being said, as a young monitor, 
of this size and this nature, water will be one of their main retreats and one of their main habitats to reside in as they would use it for drinking, um, shedding, also as a main hideaway as they could easily dodge off into the water if a bigger predator comes, a bird, a bigger lizard, a snake, some sort of mammal, any sort of predator. Also, they can climb up into small holes and hollows and trees, which is very, very important to add those hollow logs and trees. As I'm saying that, it goes into its hollow log. As you can see, it must have felt threatened by my loud voice and ugly cell phone. Just want to show you guys, these are designed and built for a purpose. The water, like I said, being a main hide, a main reside for these lizards when they're a young age. They use it very often. It is also super easy to maintain and clean in this manner you'll see in this video. But giving the option of multiple hides, multiple uh, temperature gradients, the access to the water to feel safe, the access to height to feel safe. This acts as what seems like a natural barrier, but I can also see through it. You gotta just give the options and everything has to serve a purpose in my mind. I mean, otherwise you're just kind of adding stuff in to fill space. With this somewhat of everything has a purpose, but it's yet simplistic. So you can make socializing and interacting with your monitor and feeding it and getting to build the connection with it and build the strains to, you know, have the connection with your monitor when it's older and it builds its confidence within itself, you will then be able to have that bond like I do with my bigger monitor, Blaze. So these are just very key steps. In my opinion, like I said, you can do things the way you want, but just trying to share some information, which is working out great for me and I feel would work out great for you guys. Simple system. I built all of this stuff with a skill saw and a simple drill and a simple uh, hand tool. So you, you could do it yourself if you're just a little bit handy and you can do a little bit of the research. That's all it takes. But let's get into the video. I wanna show you guys some cool feeding clips and share a little bit of more information. So let's do it. Okay. So I know in the previous video, I did show a little uh, somewhat of these uh, enclosures. I have done some updates to them. I built another one and I put them on a rack for just a little bit easier access. And I now have the hose, the drainage hose hooked up to them to make it super easy and super efficient for cleaning them. And what you do is basically, um, for my situation, I just run them out the door of my building and run them into the yard and let them drain out into the yard so it efficiently waters my grass. But due to whatever your circumstances or situation may be, you may have to either say you're in um, total suburbia and you're in a, a townhouse or an apartment and you somehow managed to get a, a monitor lizard, which you probably shouldn't have got, but you got it anyways. You could probably set up one of these in your house and run this hosing into either your bathtub or your toilet. You may have to use some force gravity to get the tail end of the water into it once you're done draining it, but I'm sure you can make it work. But for anyone else, I'm sure you could figure that out for yourself. I figured it out for myself. <laughs> but I wanna show you guys these enclosures. They're working great. So basically it's the tub on the bottom, which is you fill with water and then you outfit it to whatever your species needs are. And right now, I got three different sets of Raise Up Jobiensis in here. These are the newest babies that I finally got moved in here. They are doing absolutely fantastic. You can see this little baby Sunshine. She's chilling up front. I'm going to go ahead and try to tong feed her for you guys just so you can see how awesome and beautiful they are. And just how accessible these, these cages can really be and how great they are. Look at that little dinosaur. She's such a ripper. I love her. They really are doing so great in here, you guys. I can't complain. And um, the, access the accessibility to fresh water is such a key for their health. I think it's a major component to keeping them hydrated, their skin healthy. They have such perfect sheds when they're in these systems. Um, 
I do have two young raise ups in this one, so I'm sure I'm gonna scare my little girl off right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to get my little uh, buddy out because I know he's in the back right now. So this is an intentionally me most likely gonna be scaring this little girl. She might not get too scared. Well, this is slowly just turning into a video disaster. Come on, little buddy. Here he comes. Come on, Scar. You almost got it, bud. Oh. I'm not sure how much of that you could see. You can see it's a process, you guys, but you got to just be able to put in the work, put in the time. I don't know if you could hear all the, whoops, all the splashing in there. Just swimming around, jumping around in there. But very awesome. I'm digging the setups. They're working great. I'm sure you guys know this cage. This is Natiri's cage. And I figure I'd just try to get a couple more little feeding shots in for you guys. This guy's always fun. He's a little ripper. He's super fast. He's always on his stuff. He's absolutely beautiful. Such a stud. And he, me and a friend of mine, Phil Wolf, are going to be doing a little home study, as I'd like to call it, where we're going to be testing a theory and I will love to share more on that when I do and get more information on it. This guy is really bad on trust issues with me, as you can see. <laughs> he loves the food, but does not love the food monkey. Come here, bud. No hand, he's all for it. As soon as he sees the hand, he's like, no, sir. And he's fast as lightning. So I gotta be really quick, as you can see there. I really didn't even want him to get the food yet. Um, right now, I should have explained. So I'm in between some feeder quail right now. I have a bunch in the incubator. I'm waiting on those to come around so I get some more um, small bullet quail to feed these guys. But in the meantime, I got some chicken hearts, chicken livers, and chicken gizzards chopped up, and I have those soaked in mineral and calcium as like a little filler snack for these guys. Don't bite me a little butt. But it's definitely a good snack for them. Very nutritious. It's got some good minerals in it since it's coming from the liver, the heart, two very main organs. Absolutely fast as lightning. Fast as lightning. Come on, bud. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on. You're already there. You're already there. Oh, you little butt. You see, he's very stubborn. He does not like to give me the satisfaction of winning his love. Come on, Atir. You know you like that liver, buddy. He really does. Arr. But, I won't bore you too much. You've seen a little monitor before. This is my boy. He hates me. I love him. That's okay. So, I might throw in a little fast forward video of me doing a little service on one of these cages just to show how quick and easy it is. So that might be in this video too, cause they need some water changes right now.
Well, you guys, I think that'll do it for today's little bit of monitor talk. A little bit of behavioral stuff. Stoked I got to show you the enclosures. You can see how easy that was to just spray it out. Fresh water, no debris, no chunks of food in it. And I got my tacked on little ripper. This dude hates the foam so much. He might, he might even hate me. I don't know. It's still undetermined. Um, I won't accept it. Uh, so yeah, we're all good. All good in the hood. Love it. Also, if you guys want any information on how to build one of these enclosures for your monitor, or maybe even a snake, me and my buddies were talking about these might be good Bowega snakes enclosures because they are a riverside species. As these monitors are riverside monitors, look at those two little dinosaur heads right there. Absolutely adorable. And now they're gone. Bloop! Into the water. So, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Hope there was some information that I shared that is useful and helpful in any way, shape, or form. If you guys want, hit me up on IG, hail underscore the scales. Always down to talk about peach throats and other reptiles. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm stoked on these lizards, everything about them. They're the greatest, but no one's as good as Blaze. Huh, baby girl? Yes, you are number one. You are number one. Look at that tail, fresh sheds, fresh skin. Oh, she's got a big chunk. She's got a big chunk. She's got a big chunk coming, you guys. She's gonna be looking good. She tolerates me. She doesn't love me, she just tolerates me. All right, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Project Bear and I, the next video coming. Stay tuned, you're gonna like it.